We're joined from Canberra now by the coordinator of the National COVID Vaccine Task Force, Lieutenant General John Fruin. General Fruin, good morning to you and thanks for joining us. Morning. I just want to uh, clarify the timelines here based on the report and, and the modelling. What exactly are the targets? We talk about November, December. Can you take our viewers through what the best case scenario is for us reaching both 70 and 80 per cent? Yeah, sure. So we're, um, we're still seeking to have uh, the opportunity for every person in Australia who wants to have a, a vaccine to be able to do so this year. But if uh, all goes well, we've got the supply coming, we've got the distribution nodes set up. Uh, if people keep coming forward, then uh, we would hope to get very high levels of vaccination uh, achieved by the end of this year. So when you say, when you say all, all those wanting a vaccination, are we talking one dose or two doses by, by the end of the year, based on the modelling? Yeah, well, we certainly... Uh, I'm very confident that everyone who wants uh, a first dose will be able to get a dose. Uh, but with the supply that we have and the distribution network that we're setting up, if, if people in Australia keep coming forward for vaccination, as they are, then I think we can get uh, a, a good portion of the population fully vaccinated this year. OK. And based on that optimistic scenario, would that be 80% fully vaccinated by the end of the year? Look, um, I'm, I'm not going to tie myself to particular numbers because it really is about the willingness of the public to get vaccinated. But uh, I think we've got a really good opportunity to get to 70% this year. Uh, but as we've seen from international experience, getting above 70% uh, does require concerted effort. So uh, we'll, we'll work hard to get to 70% this year. And then if we can get further than that, that'll be great. OK, uh, we have mentioned workplace vaccinations, as does the document. How is that going to play out? We know at least a couple of the major banks are about to uh, bring in vaccination programs for frontline workers. How much more will we see on that front? Yeah, so we're looking to, to uh, bring in every possible uh, place of vaccination that we can. Uh, you know, the GPs have been doing great work. We've got the pharmacies coming into play now. The, the state hubs have been very busy. Uh, we've been engaged with industry over the last couple of weeks. I've run a couple of uh, activities now with a whole range of industry sectors. Uh, and as you've said, I'm very pleased, uh, you know, led by the CBA, the CBA and Westpac now will do uh, a work workplace vaccination trial with AstraZeneca. Uh, but there are a number of industry sectors now who are making preparations. So. Uh, as soon as we've got uh, uh, the mRNA vaccines available as well, then they'll get into workplace vaccination probably uh, in September at some stage, maybe late September, but it, definitely early October. OK, now drive through is by mid-September. Talk us through that. Yeah, well, that's, that's another option. Uh, so we've looked at uh, all, all of the options. Uh, drive throughs is one potential option. Uh, the plan that we've released yesterday also talks about pop-up hubs. What I'd really like to see uh, as we get later into the year is the maximum convenience available for uh, people in Australia to, to get vaccinated. So uh, we're intending to, to keep looking at all of these sort of alternatives and then getting the uh, arrangements in place to, to, uh, to get them going. But of course, the jurisdictions will decide what they think is best for them and then we'll work with uh, the states and territories to, to facilitate that. There's reference in the document to, to further ad campaigns. Uh, when will we see those? Will we see those? And what demographic will they target in particular? Yeah, so look, the, the campaign will evolve through the course of the year. Uh, we've started to uh, stress through Arm Yourself uh, the importance for individuals to get vaccinated and the importance of them encouraging their friends and families and communities to get vaccinated. Uh, you know, as we go through the year, we'll start to sort of rally the nation a bit more to, to getting this done as a nation, because it really is an important uh, underpinning of our, our national resilience to COVID going forward. Um, we'll also be starting to look more specifically at uh, issues around, around hesitancy and how we might be able to convince those people who uh, at the moment aren't sure about uh, getting vaccinated. Um, some of those groups, uh, you know, will need some very specific campaigns, so we'll look at that. But then ultimately, uh, the biggest incentive in all of this is uh, getting back to those, uh, those things that we really enjoy, like international travel yeah. and being able to sort of uh, work without lockdowns and the like, Mike. Yeah, it should be incentive for lots of people. I, is, while you're here, I've got to ask you about this report in the Saturday paper by journalist Rick Morton at the weekend. He says in the National Cabinet meeting last week, you launched what was described as a savage broadside against New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian when she asked for more vaccine doses to be transferred from GP clinics to elected uh, to, to some of those local government areas. Did that happen? Michael, uh, we don't talk about what happens in Cabinet, but that's not my style. We have, uh, we have firm discussions around options, but uh, 
it didn't happen as described. So you didn't get cranky with her at all? It's not my place to be cranky. It's my place to get the vaccine rollout done, Michael. OK, and finally, I, I found myself watching Question Time yesterday. Don't judge me. I was pretty bored, but I, but I turned it on. And your, your name was thrown around between the Prime Minister and the Opposition Leader. Uh, the Prime Minister claimed Anthony Albanese cancelled a scheduled meeting with you yesterday. Did that happen? Um, I, I was due to, uh, to brief Mr Albanese yesterday. That meeting was rescheduled to Thursday. Um, it's a normal part of... Uh, Tough scheduling weeks, Michael. Right, OK. So uh, the, uh, Mr Albanese says Thursday was the first opportunity he had to sit down with you, as in tomorrow. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I initially had a booking for Monday and then it was moved to Thursday. That, to me, is of uh, pretty routine, routine business. OK, General Fraun, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Michael.